we now enter a new chapter where we will talk about power. So there is no better way to start than uh, defining for ourselves what does it mean when we say a power. So I brought up a definition, then I will try to make some uh, example, and I know how terrible I'm at drawing, so I'm sorry about that. And then we will compare leadership versus power. So let's go for it. The definition of a power says, power refers to a capacity that A, some person A, uh, has to influence the behavior of B, so then we have some B, so that B acts in accordance with A's wishes. So to make it nicer, let's say that A will be replaced with a name. So let's say we are going to have Mark. So this right over here is Mark. And then let's say B would be, uh, let's call him Peter. So Peter, and this is going to be Peter. Now let's imagine a situation that Mark uh, is a teacher, is a teacher. And of course, being a teacher means that you maybe are also an examiner. So you are making and evaluating the exams. So you are examiner. And now Peter, of course, is a student, is a student. And um, let's say that Peter, of course, has a wish to pass the course. This is the wish of Peter to pass the course the course that Mark is teaching. So pass the course. Now let's continue with the definition so that uh, A, Mark should have some capacity uh, to influence Peter so that Peter will act in accordance with A's wishes. So that let's say Mark has a wish so that uh, students, students uh, are coming or come uh, or come to lectures, uh, to lectures. So that is the wish. So we have a wish over here. That is Mark's wish. Uh, students come to lectures. Now we get to the power. So what we can say is that Peter is dependent on Mark. So Peter is dependent, dependent, on Mark. Why is it so? Because Peter is a student of, on, of uh, Mark and now Mark has some power over Peter. So Mark has power, power over Peter. Well, why is it so? Because Mark has something that Peter desires. Mark is holding the decision if Peter will pass the course. So Mark holds something holds something something that uh, that Peter that Peter desires uh, desires and now because of this because of this dependency that Peter would like to have something that Mark possesses that means that Mark has power over Peter to influence his behavior and now when Mark's wish is that students come to lecture, then Mark can influence Peter so that he will be coming to the lectures. Now, what comes here as well is the sense of alternatives. We have to keep them in mind, alternatives, alternatives. So that if there would be 100 other teachers except of Mark, then Peter would have some alternatives. And we, that would mean that Mark wouldn't have such a big power over Peter. But when Peter needs to pass exactly this one course that is being taught by Mark, he has no other alternatives. So this is just increasing the Mark's power over Peter. So this was the definition of power. Now let's think about a similar concept, which is the leadership. What happens when we compare leadership and power? So we have a power. Power does not require goal compatibility, merely dependence. So you see it over here. Dependence is the cornerstone of the power. So dependence, and we have seen it in our example. Peter is dependent on Mark. So a power is being created, which has Mark. However, leadership, on the other hand, requires some congruence between goals of the leader and those being led. So we are talking about some, and let me just change the color. So we have some goals, uh, goals. 
And that is very different. So that when you are leading someone, uh, you should show some goals. For instance, you have a goal um, to be well educated, well educated. And now that is a goal. That is a goal. Now, if you are a leader and you will be trying to lead other people, some students or those being led, they must have also the same goals as you have in order uh, that they will allow you to be their leader. So do not, do not really confuse these two concepts. They are quite different, leadership and power.